With that, we're going to turn it up. We are going to pray for him, and we're going to commission him today as a church. But he has some great things to share with you about what his ministry is really going to be about. So you want to grab his mic? Oh, he, that's right. He has that one. Okay. Do you want me to use this? Check, check, check. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Nate. Oh, you, you kind of stole my line because that's exactly where I was going to go was that, um, you know, they keep talking about, you know, rich this, rich that, but it's, it's not rich. It's the Lord. The, the Lord. And everybody sit down. I just noticed you're all still standing. Um, the Lord has given each of us gifts and in all kinds of different areas. And what's cool is when the Lord redeems the gifts that he's given us and uses them to build his kingdom. And so for me, I'm a TV guy. I did TV for 25 years. And yet God is giving me the opportunity to be able to use those skills and those passions to further his kingdom. You know, Bobby in the fire department, he used where he's at to, to do something incredible on stage. That was awesome, Bobby. And uh, here's a little hint too, to, so you don't see the shaking, use a laptop. That's, that's, that's what I'm going to do. So, um, and then, and that's true for each of you. Each of you has been gifted in a very unique way. God has made you very special, and he has something that only you can do to make his kingdom great, make his name known. And so, um, as we look forward to talking about the, um, the media ministry and what all that's going to be, part of it is bringing a sense of branding to all the campuses, but it's also about extending the reach and amplifying what we have here. You know, um, I've, I've had the opportunity the last two weeks to see all the campuses. I was at Milani Tech two weeks ago. I was in Wahiwa last week, and now I get to be again with my home family here in Haleiwa, and I get to see what God's doing and the way he's equipped each of those campuses. Campuses. And, um, and one of the things that we have here is, is we have this love for each other, this passion for the Lord, this spirit-led body. And I think what media does is it just extends that. It amplifies that. It makes our family be able to be so much bigger. Um, and I think when people think about media ministry, you know, they understand that it's going to be websites and social media and buttons and lights and cameras and things like that. But uh, what I want you guys to really understand is a little bit more about the heart behind it and, and what's, uh, what my you know, passion is behind this. And uh, of course, to help me communicate that, I made a video because I'm a media guy. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have them run this in just a moment. But as you watch it, if, you know, if God, I know we have everyone's support here, but if God stirs something else inside of you, something a little bit deeper that you say, you just feel the, the Lord's leading saying, I want you to be a part of this. Then I want you to find me after service, okay? We're, I've been collecting names. We're going to have a big meeting afterwards from all the different campuses, and we're going to start something new. And you may not even know exactly what capacity that will be in, but we'll help you figure that out with the, with the Lord and uh, with where God has gifted you. So take a look at this video, and I'll come right back. The world is changing faster than ever. Everything is moving. Everything is changing. I find young people all over the world are searching for something. They don't know what it is. Stability is a moving target. What once was a world of sure things is now an undulating sea of questions and possibilities. How ironic it is that in an age where knowledge is so easily available, truth becomes so obscured and undefined. Trying to find peace in this direction and that and failing and the same old emptiness and the boredom and the mystery of life, they don't know where they came from, why they're here, where they're going. So confused! Everyone chooses to live in their own bubble of beliefs and is content to view the world from inside their bubble. When they live in such isolation, how will they ever know the truth of Christ? Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white for harvest. The world is more connected than ever. The internet is changing the way we date, communicate, learn, shop, relate, and even grow spiritually. The fields are indeed ready for harvest. Most young people growing up today have never experienced life without some sort of digital connection. Currently, there are 3 billion people online, and that number is growing rapidly. It has never been easier to make disciples of all nations and to individually witness to the remotest parts of the earth. You have the privilege of participating with our loving Lord in the fulfillment of his great commission in this generation. The internet is a borderless electronic mission field and it is a worldwide 24-7 open door. It is time for the church to stop thinking only locally but globally too. We live in an age when it is no more difficult to reach out and connect to someone across the globe than it is with someone across the street. Who will set sail on these new seas 
to meet and reach new peoples for the Lord. Who will join the weak, the distant, the different, becoming all things to all people so that by all possible means we might save some? The reality of this life and His resurrection is the hope of mankind. Who will strike the spark to ignite the world on fire for Jesus? We will. We are the new missionaries for the new mission field. And by the grace of God, even though our feet may never leave our homes, we are flinging our hearts across the globe. We are counting the cost. We are opening our minds and our eyes to see our brothers and sisters around the world, so many who so desperately need Christ. And we refuse to let language barriers, culture barriers, physical barriers, knowledge barriers, or borders of any kind prevent us from sharing the light of Christ with a lost and hurting world. We will bridge the gap. We will initiate. We will love. We will. New Hope Spark, the online ministries of New Hope Central Oahu. So that's where we're going. It's, a, it's sort of another campus. Uh, it's an online campus, and it's a campus that we're looking for people to help us plant, but you don't have to leave the campus you're at. And so if something inside of you said, I want to be a part of that, then come find me. Um, but really what we're trying to do here is to reach the world. Um, and never before in the history of man have we been able to do that on an individual basis like we can today with the Internet. And so it's about redeeming that. I mean, we all know we're, there are ways that the Internet is being used to not glorify God. And we are going to use it to reach people and change hearts and connect with people who we would no, not otherwise have the opportunity to connect with them. So I hope you'll join me in that. And if so, uh, find me after service. And uh, I'd like to get your name down, and we'll, we'll take it from there. And I'm so glad that they had him do a video because sometimes people think, oh, he's a media pastor. He's just a techie guy. But I hope that you see that Rich is so much more than a techie guy. He has a pastor's heart. He has a pastor's heart to reach the lost. And, and not too long ago, you, we went through a, a series that talked about our heart for evangelism and that we really want to turn Sunday as a place to reach your friends, your family, your coworkers, people that are in other states. You can have them dial in now through this new Spark ministry and together we can serve God with excellence and reach him. So the question may be, so do we call him Pastor Rich? Yes, you do. And I know for many of my friends, um, that was kind of awkward. Um, when Glenn and I became pastors, they were, it was weird for them to call us pastors. It was even weirder for our children to call us you know, pastors. Um, but I, I want you to know that we're not a culture that is very legalistic. So don't worry if you just call him Rich. He won't be offended. No. On the contrary, if you call him Pastor Rich, he'll probably be uncomfortable <laughs> because we were for years. You'll settle into that. You'll get used to it. Um, but definitely in this Sunday morning setting, we want to address him as pastor so that people who are visiting, they'll know who the pastors are, right? Um, not that we're any better than anybody else, but most people that are visiting want to know who the pastoral staff is. So it would be the three of us here. Um, so you're going to see a lot of uh, more of Rich doing pastoral duties, um, and we're going to, we feel blessed because God gave us his best, and I don't even know what we did to deserve Rich and his whole family come all the way out here with us, uh, but we are eternally grateful for that. I just want to say New Hope Spark, isn't it a great way to reach out to people that are suffering from FOMO, NOMO, EMO? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Let's redeem it for Jesus. Okay, with that, because we do want to give him some time to preach, okay, because he has a whole message he needs to give today, too. So let's, let's just commission and pray over this family. Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you for just, just this um, pivotal moment in the Fuel family, especially for Rich, as he answers that call. Um, like many of your servants um, in the Bible, Father God, he stood up. He stood tall and he said, here I am, Lord, send me. And so, Father, we thank you that you are sending him out, Father God, with this new New Hope Spark ministry to touch lives and to evangelize and to share the light of Christ. We thank you, Father God, that you've given us an opportunity to partner with the ministry that you've planted in his heart. You gave birth to this, Father God, and we are simply following your um, you're leading, Father God. I thank you for Pastor Mike, who had the vision and the understanding of the the 
importance of keeping evangelism at the forefront of all of our minds, Father God. I thank you that he is so committed to you and your kingdom and reaching the lost that he was willing to create this position, to create this new ministry, Father God, and we will all be blessed for it. And so many lives will come to know Jesus through it. So Father, I bless Rich, I bless Emily, I br bless, bless Bradley and Brian, and I pray, Father God, a blood hedge of protection over them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, that no weapon will be formed against them, that as they answer the call as a family to enter into full-time ministry, Father, that all of their needs would be met financially, emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Father, I pray that you would continue to give rich, creative um, juices, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would bring the right team of people to the Spark Ministry, Father God, so that together they can lead New Hope Center of Oahu into the charge of being a media savvy, media tech church with the heart to reach the lost. And we commit him to you. We commit his family to you. We commit this ministry and vision to you. In your son's precious name and all of God's children said, amen. amen. Would you give him a hand clap one more time?